In this module, we are going to use something you learned probably in your first course in physics, uh, the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, that law is extremely useful in evaluating uh, not only individual pieces of food processing equipment, uh, but the entire processing operations. Recall that the first law of thermodynamics uh, states that energy can be neither created nor destroyed, but can be transformed from one form to another. Now we can write this as the total energy entering a system minus total energy leaving a system equals the change in total energy of that system. So we can write this also as E in minus E out equals delta E system. Well, delta E system means the change in the energy of that system. Uh, we can also rewrite this uh, expression in terms of rate. Uh, note that if you use a dot above the symbol, uh, that refers to uh, per unit time. So we can write E dot in minus E dot out equals delta E dot for the system. The uh, units of uh, E dot uh, are joules per second. Uh, you also know that joules per second uh, is also uh, often referred to as watts. So we will use this first law of thermodynamics in conducting what we call energy balances. So in this first module, uh, we will look at only the thermal part of the energy balance. And we will look at a closed system. So what is a closed system? Well, closed system, uh, we can draw here a little block showing a piece of equipment and surround it by a boundary. Uh, so uh, we have a piece of equipment enclosed in a system boundary. Now, in a closed system, energy can go through the system boundary. Uh, so if you are applying heat, for example, uh, that heat can transfer uh, through the system boundary. Uh, however, uh, there the boundary does not allow any mass flow. So for example, no water can go in or no food product can go in. So the uh, boundary is impervious to any mass flow in or out of the system. So this is a closed system. So the uh, heat transfer is due to the uh, temperature difference uh, between uh, the surroundings and the system. So we will use a symbol for quantity of heat and we will call it uh, capital Q or uppercase Q and the units of Q are joules. Uh, the, there is a sign convention that we must follow and the sign convention is that if the heat flow is from the system to the surroundings then Q is negative. On the other hand if the uh, heat transfer is from the surroundings to the system then Q is positive. And also, we can use the rate term. Uh, remember, the rate is uh, per unit time. So uh, if we look at the rate of heat transfer, then we express that with a symbol lowercase q, uh, and the units are joules per second. And again, recall that joules per second are also uh, expressed as watts. 1 joule per second equals 1 watt. So how do we determine Q? The Q equals M, which is the mass of a system, uh, integral from temperature T1 to T2, and in the integral we have C for the specific heat capacity times dT, where capital T is the temperature. Now there are two types of processes that can occur. Uh, one is under constant pressure. So if we have constant pressure, 
then the uh, Q uh, will be equal to mass M integral T1 to T2 and instead of using C we will use Cp. Uh, this is the specific heat capacity at constant pressure times dt. Now if the process is being carried out under constant volume then we have Q equals M the integral T1 to T2 Cv dt. Now note that for most solids and liquids the values for Cp and Cv are very similar. However, for gases, uh, those values could be quite uh, different. Now, in addition to heat, of course, there are other forms of energy. For example, uh, work, uh, moving boundaries, or gravitational forces, or change in velocity, and so on. Those we will examine in a separate module.